I'm just incomplete? And that's what makes you so very human. Yo! <laughs> oh, dang! Huh? Over where? <gasps> oh! Oh my gosh! Nanami! How did she get out? What the frick? <laughs> dang! How's it going, everybody? Hoodlumut here, back with some more Chaos Head Noah. And uh, last time, so much happened, I'm having a hard time even recapping it in my brain. Uh, Takumi tried to maybe prove that maybe, just maybe, he wasn't a delusion by hugging Nanami, and then Nanami disappeared in his arms, and that was, I think, the final straw to where he finally said, you know what, just kill me. And he asked Seratan to help him die, and Seratan sent him out to, uh, I believe it was, was it Scramble Crossing? Is that where they were? Uh, I think they were in front of the, uh, the 107 building anyway. And uh, there he was assaulted basically by a bunch of cameramen and other people who went into a frenzy, uh, seemingly because of Noah too, uh, because we know that they were trying to do more, like, like one final big test, and uh, they started pummeling Takami. But in the process of doing so, Shogun appeared, and Shogun basically revealed that yes, in fact, Takami, you are a delusion, and I'm the real you, and I made you to be able to stop Noah too, because you're the only one who can. And uh, Dimi went to try and stop Noah too herself, was unsuccessful, was thrown into her own delusion where she was having uh, a really bad time and uh, while, while, whilst trying to save Nanami. And uh, so then Takumi, uh, with the help of Shogun, learned how to get his D-sword and accepted the fact that he was a delusion against his own, you know, uh, will, so to speak, uh, basically cursed Shogun's name and said, you shouldn't have ever made me, but now that I'm here, I care about Dimi, and so do you, so I guess I'm not doing this to save the world, I'm doing this to save Dimi, and he decided he was going to try and stop Noah too, or at least, you know, whatever Nozomi is fully trying to, uh, 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 you know, implore with the machine. Um, that's not the right wording. Anyway, <laughs> he's going to try to stop them, is, is, is the point, and save Dimi. In the process, he took out a couple of porters that were in the, uh, you know, immediate area that, that should have stopped the fighting that was going on around him with all these different people in, in this chaotic moment. And uh, when he got to the third porter after dispatching the other two with his D-sword, he found that the third was, in fact, Hazuki-san. And we found out that Hazuki-san not only was grim this entire time, but was also the new gen culprit, the real new gen culprit, and is actually psychotic, and for some reason is able to hide it, I guess, and uh, seems to also be part of the Church of the Divine Light, uh, because she was saying the same types of stuff that Sua had said right before killing Bon. Um, yeah, and that's basically, after that happened, a big white light showed up in the sky. We had an earthquake that happened again, just like earlier, uh, back when that happened to Bon, Yua, and, uh, and Takumi. And, uh, so that was where we left off, is we don't know what happened. So now we're here, and I think we're inside of Takumi's head, but I guess we'll find out. So without any further ado, let's just get back into this, shall we? I was standing atop a body of water, incredibly clear, transparent water. It was shallow, reaching only my ankles, but it was not cold. Intermittently, the waves whispered in my ears. I was tightly grasping the handles of a wheelchair. Oh, interesting.
interesting. Wait, so is this Takami or is this is this delusion Takami or or, or real Takami at this point then? Huh. Shogun. No. The real Nishijo Takami was right before me, his head adorned with a knitted cap. He sat ever so slightly hunched forward in his wheelchair. Wait, so he's in a wheelchair too, so we are in delusion Takami's head then, okay. There wasn't a single thing surrounding us. Neither shells buried in the sand, nor seabirds elegantly soaring through the sky. Nothing so expressly emulative of the sea could be seen. There were no signs of life, only the blue sea and the clear crystal sky. The terrain was completely flat all around me, with the horizon stretching as far as the eye could see. This place was not the real world. Before long, I will be dead. Together with the sound of breaking waves, I heard Shogun's voice. From where I was standing, I couldn't see his expression. The tone of his voice didn't carry any particular feeling of lamentation. In reality, his words felt like they were simply casual, passing remarks. If you look at this body of mine, I think you'll understand. Small wrinkled and withered away. All of his hair had fallen out. It is an illness from within. It first began at the age of ten, when my physical development halted. And then, I aged. Was he aging prematurely? That illness was supposed to be rare, affecting only one out of every eight million people. It started when you were ten? A gruesome scene etched into my memories began to rise to the surface. It was about three months before that bus accident. That was the onset. Oh, is that why Takumi had memories of his parents being overly protective? Oh, because he was ill. The real him was ill and he had like trickle memories of that. Oh, no. Yo, that makes sense. Oh, dang. The bus accident. Did you... I'm not truly sure. At the time, I still wasn't fully aware of my powers. Right, so he's still thinking that maybe he caused it. Interesting. But so, yeah, so back when he was younger, though, he would have been mad that his parents didn't let him go, thinking that they were bad parents. But really, but re really it was because they, they, they were trying to protect him because he, was, he had this rare illness. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> long before the onset of my illness, for as long as I could remember... I was able to use the powers of a gigalomaniac. I believed it to be normal. Whether consciously or unconsciously, I repeatedly made use of those powers. And because of this, the contradictions in my existence grew too large. Aoi Sena told you about this, didn't she? Pair produced in tandem with particles are antiparticles, which stock up in the D-sword. Right, that's right. I forgot, too. Part of the last episode was is we apparently were able to see uh, other people's... I don't know if it was their memories or their experiences, but we were able to use our gigalomaniac powers to, like, say that we've, we've literally, like... They've made it as though we, the player, have been viewing all these other people, but really it was, it was Takami that was seeing all of those different things like you being on her computer or or you know Senna off by herself or whatever places where Takami never physically was present where we were being like a a a a a fly on the wall you know as viewers it was actually Takami viewing those events happening somehow 
So I, that was another thing that happened I forgot. Given, mathematically speaking, that antiparticles are that which approach the past. The larger the amount stocked up, the larger the gigalomaniacs gap from their present state. And if not corrected, those contradictions will eventually lead toward one's self-collapse as an existence. Right. As he spoke, Shogun didn't move an inch in his wheelchair. What was he looking at? Could he even see it all? The more I use my powers, the more this illness progresses. Wait, so how come, like, how come, how come Senna and, 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 and Kozue and all of them, how come they don't, like, get worse as time goes on? Is it just because, because cause she said you need the D-sword, right? Because the antiparticles, but if you, it was if you use your delusion without having a D-sword, right? Like, if you make delusions without a disorder and in, in his case like use your gigalomaniac powers so so is it that he didn't have a disord so that that was what was causing the illness is that is that am i understanding that right it's still a little confusing there for me but okay can't you just heal yourself with your gigalomaniac powers if i use my powers the illness progresses in essence, plus and minus makes zero. Nothing changes. Why? Why did you... make an otaku freak loser like me? You could have made someone stronger, cooler, better looking. Some proactive alpha, I don't know. Creating a person and one who can wield the powers of a gigalomaniac at that, is not such a simple task. Creating you put me into a coma for close to a year. Oh, frick. Wow. That's wild. Okay. So, what? I'm just incomplete? And that's what makes you so very human. Yo! <laughs> oh, dang! Oh, they really are going that route, aren't they? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, it sure does. It sure does make you very human. Holy crap. That's really wild. So, was it intentional then? Because he said it's hard to make, like, a person using his powers, but but was the intention to not make someone perfect on purpose? Yo. Yeah. You don't have to try and make me feel better. I'm being earnest. I clicked my tongue. I really did hate this guy. Dimi always scolded me for using my powers. She was trying to help you. Wasn't she? <laughs> With that said, I can't obey her warnings. My IR2 was the impetus for the current critical situation. IR2. That strange scribble on the back of my essay. IR2 caught the eye of a certain scientist, and eventually... It allowed Nozomi technology to begin their research. Oh. That being Project Noah. Yo, how did he how did that paper get out though? You know what I mean? What cause he did he do it in school, did he say? I think he did say it was a school paper, yeah. So maybe Maybe it was one of his teachers, or maybe a teacher showed it to her colleague or something? I don't know. Okay. It is a device which artificially generates the abilities of a gigalomaniac, so to speak. Because I encountered Bimi, I was able to realize their plan. 
One part of Project Noah was her cruel torture. Noah's systems requires code samples to increase its efficacy. They are unique brainwaves emitted by gigalomaniacs in the process of using their powers. Okay. To obtain them, the president of Nozomi, Norose, tortured Dimi severely. At a time of intense negative emotions, Gigalomaniacs awaken to their powers and acquire their D-sword. Once again, I remembered Senna's words. Yup. As biorhythms climb, the neurons in the midbrain limbic system excessively secrete dopamine, and one's D-sword appears. Depending on the person, this could come from feeling threatened, excited, sad, hateful, or happy. The higher the amount of dopamine secreted, the easier it becomes to observe. That's why you kept coming after me? Harassing me? For that? Yes. To forcefully awaken you. Oh, yup, so he was trying to awaken him, yup. I had a feeling. I had a feeling, but but Demi didn't want him to awaken because she wanted. So so my guess is is Demi wanted the original Takami to live a normal life because he wanted her to live a normal life. I I kind of got a little confused in that when when it was showing that flashback to when both of them were in the hospital. So I, I'm not I, I'm a little foggy there, but um. But maybe that's why, so, because cause we know Dimi was wanting us to live a normal life, so maybe she wanted Takami to live a normal life, but because he couldn't, she wanted uh, his delusion self to live the normal life that he, he was currently living, right? Which wasn't really normal, it was really, like, depraved, right? Because he was just living in a freaking container, but, uh, you know, and, and being a degenerate, but, but at the same time, she just didn't want him to have to suffer because she couldn't stop the the original Takami from suffering. Is that kind of what I'm understanding? But so then, so then Shogun was constantly saying, no, he's got to be awakened so that we can stop Noah too, which, which the OG Takami feels responsible for because he created the formula that helped them make the machine. So, wow. Yeah, I knew Shogun was good all this time. I felt it right in the, in the core of my soul. I knew he was good. They were trying to play him as the bad guy too much. I knew he was a good guy. Dang. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Demi and I weren't the only ones. There were others who had undergone severe mental and physical torture because of Project Noah. Ayase, Senna, Kozapi, and even Nanami. Cruel trials had been laid out for all of them. Also, they could become gigalomaniacs. IR2 gave birth to Noah too, and I must stop it by my own hands. Hey, you know what? Taking responsibility into his own hands, that's pretty rad. I mean, he had to create another version of himself to do it, but I mean, he kind of has to, right? He's, he's a cripple. He can't do anything, so. Dang, man. You love to see it. You love to see responsibility. But this is the body I have. I can hardly move at all, let alone enough to destroy Noah too. Moreover, Nozomi has targeted me, coveting my own code sample. That was to say nothing of how he was hospitalized at A.H. Tokyo General Hospital a place which had hidden ties to the Nozomi group. That's why I had to go into hiding. Ami-chan of the Phantom Hospital Room. Dimi was the sole person capable of entering it. And because I was no longer able to move about, I... made me. Shogun weakly nodded. Dimi repeatedly told me to erase you. That I should stop. That what I was doing was whittling my life away.
but the life I have left isn't much as it is. Whether or not I use my powers makes very little difference now. His voice was deeply serene. He had a certain sense of wiseness to him. Perhaps it was one you could only get from living out your days under a death sentence. As well as this, once you awakened and used your powers, my own life could no longer be maintained anyway. Oh. You mean... You and I are one? Yes, in body and soul. But you have to promise me one thing. No more delusions. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's why she said that. Yo, wait, so uh, there was a handful of times I didn't commit to a delusion. So, like... Does that mean that maybe Shogun won't die? I did. I, I didn't do it. I listened to Demi last time. They gave me another, another, another delusion, right? Since she sent it, it's there was only one. I think since she'd said no more delusions, and I, I listened to her. I listened. So will he live? Can we keep? Can we keep uh, Shogun alive? Oh dang. Okay. Your delusions are far too strong. The more delusions you have, the more the lifespan of the real you gets whittled away. If I tried to keep my promise to Themi, I couldn't go help her. Even if I could, I wouldn't be able to do a thing. It wouldn't matter what I tried. They'd turn the tables on me in an instant. How much longer do you have? Presumably, until today, perhaps tomorrow. That soon? I was stunned. I hadn't expected him to have so little time left. Is it because I awakened? You don't need to worry. Your awakening is exactly what I've been seeking for so long. If you die, then what happens to me? You are one with me in body and soul. But at the same time, the fact you were real booted makes you a real human being. I knew he was real booted! Yo! Oh my gosh! Yeah, so... So he real booted himself because he believed he was real for so long, right? That has to be it. Or was he real booted only when he started getting his D-sword? Is that the only time he was real booted? Because the whole time I was thinking he himself kept saying, everyone else is a lie. I'm real. I'm the I'm the real person. And then that would that have made him a real human being? Dude. Oh my gosh. What is this? Your birth may not have been traditional but you are still a human being. <laughs> if I disappeared, could that save you? No. The most it would give me is an increase in lifespan lasting from a few days to a few weeks. But you mustn't choose such a foolish option. I wish for you to destroy Noah too, and I wish for you to have no restraint in using your powers to do so. You don't have to tell me. I know. I'm not so charitable as to hold back for your sake. <laughs> Shogun's shoulders shook faintly as he laughed. Making him laugh was the last thing I'd meant to do, so that annoyed me. I'm so glad you've awakened. As selfish and troublesome as this may sound, I leave the rest to you. Dang. Suddenly, the feeling of the wheelchair's handles disappeared. Before I knew it, 
the wheelchair he was sitting in began to leave me behind. As it moved, it almost seemed to glide across the surface of the water. Its two wheels cut into the water, making waves as they turned. I had no intention of following him. Instead, I absently watched him go. My role here has ended. Wow, that is selfish. You're seriously going to dump it all on me? I'm just a little tired. Let me rest a while. He turned to me from his wheelchair. As usual, I couldn't read his expression, but his voice showed an intense urgency. There's no time. Narose has moved Noah 2 into full-scale operation. You need to hurry. Now that it has come to this, Noah 2 must be destroyed directly. I'm counting on you. Wow. And then, as if embraced by a cloud of mist, he began to disappear. The very colors of this mental world slowly began to fade. You don't have the right to count on me. Anything I do, it's going to be because I myself wanted to do it. The sound of the waves became more distant. Just like Themi had once, I burned this perfect, crystal clear sky into my memories. And then, I gently closed my eyes. Oh my gosh. That freaking sucks. Wow. You know, and it's like... Okay, there's a lot going on suddenly, but I gotta talk about this for a second. Like... Like, I, like you, you kind of got to feel bad for Shogun, right? Like, he created this, this formula, and he probably didn't even really mean to. He just did it, right? But he said that someone, like his future self, came to him, right? Or like his, his older self in a dream? So I'm assuming that happened to the real Takami, right? So who was the older person that came to him? How did he do that? Did he, like, giggle a maniac? Like, you know, send a, 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 a mental message into his dreams via, like, a time, you know, wormhole thing or something? Like, 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 what happened for that to happen? It couldn't have been, actually, though, right? Because his older self wouldn't have existed because, because he dies, like, right now, supposedly, right? At, like, 17, and he's crippled and all this stuff. So, like, it doesn't fully make sense. Dang. I don't know. But anyway, like, you feel bad for him, though, right? So he's trying to, like correct his mistake his error that he you know shouldn't have done by the only way he knew how which was to make another version of himself that could complete the task for him you know it's like but but in the process of doing so he created someone he birthed he, he birthed someone who who he never who, who never should have been born you know and left them with like this in, in essence, like, it, well, like, in, in delusion Takami's mind, a purposeless existence, but, I mean, his, he did have a purpose, he's like, I created you so you could stop this, but it's like, he's, like, thinking, like, that's not what I, you know, like, that, I, I was created to do your bidding, I'm not doing that, you know, it's like, you know, I have my own thoughts, my own feelings and stuff, but, but they all feel like a delusion to him now, because he, he's like, I'm not real, I, I wasn't, you know, but, but then he just now learned that he is a real human being, right, so now he's wanting to make his own decisions. It's it's so good. Like, I really like that. That's really cool. But, like, you feel for both of them. You feel for the delusion and you feel for the real person. You know, it's like, if you were a delusion and you just found out that, like, you know, your whole life that you thought you had has been a lie this whole time. You know what I mean? It's like, that's kind of like a betrayal in a way. It's like, why was I even born just to, like, do this one task? And then what? I do this one task and then what? It's like the real Takabi doesn't have an answer for him because he's going to die. So it's like, I don't know, just live your life. And it's like, what are you talking about, you know? And it's like, how many real, actual people have had that type of a thought? Like, why was I even born, you know? It's so good. Oh, my goodness. Okay, sorry. I had to, I had to, like, work through that for a second there. But let's get to this now. 
This is uh, Dogen Zaka, I think, right? Yeah, okay. A reporter on the radio was reading the news with a grave tone. As of this moment, the confirmed number of casualties is 233, and the final toll is expected to go well over 30,000. As per the announcement made by the Meteorological Agency, the recent earthquake had a seismic intensity of 7, and a magnitude of 7.8 on the Richter scale, a size comparable to that of the Great Kanto earthquake. A number of buildings in Shibuya appear to have collapsed, and a large-scale cave-in has emerged. Travel through the Shibuya line of the Shunto Expressway has been suspended, as multiple sections across the entirety of the elevated railroad tracks have collapsed. In regard to public transportation, all lines, the Yamanote line included. Static mixed in with the news, until eventually the reporter spoke no longer. Piece of junk. We've lost her again. Oh, what the frick? Wait! Momose! Oh my goodness! Momose shook and hit the old radio with her hand. But upon realizing she was getting nowhere, she let out a heavy sigh. <sighs> Guess it's too old to do us any good. Oh, frick! Oh my goodness! Hey! She's with all of them, oh my goodness! Holy crap! And those, that's new images! Those are like new uh, images of the both of them, what the frick? Oh my goodness! Wait, so they met up with uh, Momose, huh? Yua must have taken them, uh, must have taken uh, Ayase to her. Holy crap! What about Bon? What about him? Let me see him! He better be alive, dude, where is he? He didn't die, he couldn't have died! Please! Forcing a smile, she looked to the side. She could see the figures of Kishimoto Ayase and Kusunoki Yua walking along, expressions of fatigue coloring their faces. <sighs> Both of their uniforms were covered in soot, making it clear how laborious the trek here had been. And yet, the great swords they were holding, their D-swords, did not have a speck of dust on them. Instead, they shone with an unclouded, brutal radiance. Yo, dude! After the earthquake, Yua and Ayase had walked back to Shibuya from Yoyogi, went straight to the Frisia office, then joined up with Momose. Oh no, dude! That means they didn't get Bon! No! Bro, he has to be alive, dude. They, they couldn't have died, dude. Not my favorite character, man. Come on. Don't do this to me. He's gotta still be alive somewhere, please. Waiting for the missing Bon to return, the three had stayed near the office throughout the night. Even though the earthquake had put the building on the verge of collapse, they had remained all the same. But in the end, Bon had never shown. Oh no. Momose suggested leaving Shibuya immediately, something Ayase clearly took issue with. Gladiol has awakened. Make haste, for we must unite with the other Black Knights. Ayase asserted her feelings of urgency by tugging on Yuwa's hand wanting to reach the rubble-laden heart of Shibuya as quickly as they could. In the end, Yua and Momose had no choice but to follow along. Okay. It was 7 a.m. Not even an hour had passed since the sky had first begun to brighten. There was not a single trace of the refreshing morning air. The utter mayhem that had been cloaked in darkness was slowly being exposed by the rising sun. And right now, the three girls found themselves in the midst of it. The city of Shibuya had been transformed into the very picture of hell itself. Roads were torn to oblivion. Asphalt protruded from the earth. 
a number of buildings had collapsed. Their debris scattered in broken chunks along the side of the road. Nearly every window that could be seen was broken, and a massive billboard had fallen from its usual perch atop a building's roof. One would not have to walk far to see countless corpses left undisturbed, littered among the chaos. For every body Momose witnessed, the same act played out inside her head, one in which she clasped her hands together in pity for their demise. But there were just far too many. It was only partway through that she could not take it anymore. Realizing the only way to retain her sanity was to ignore them outright. The remaining people they would occasionally pass by had lost all expression, existing only to stagger aimlessly through the streets. A group of men had come together to try and help the survivors buried beneath the rubble, but it did not seem like there was much they could do without heavy lifting equipment. Momose took another glance at what Yua was holding in her hands. A D-sword. Yo, so Momose can see it, though. Hey, yo, is it because she real booted it, or is it just because she... Does she have gigalomaniac powers, too? What the heck? Ayase had explained them to her. Much like magic, they were swords that could be taken out of thin air. What Bon had told her had been true. And yet... Yua seemed only shocked and bewildered about possessing one for herself. Question, Kishimoto-san. Ayase, walking slightly ahead of the group, paid no attention to Momose's call. The expression on her face made it clear her patience was wearing thin. Counting the two of you, you said there were seven people who could wield these D-sword things, correct? Yes. All right. Then do you know where they are? I do not. Then how do you... I can feel it. The will. There is no doubt this path is the one we must take. Ayase was effectively a brick wall. With no other options left... Momose repeated the same words for what felt like the thousandth time. Now isn't the time to be aimlessly strolling. We should really find somewhere to take shelter for the time being. No. There is no time for that. What about the other... Um... Black Knights, were they called? Perhaps they're already at the evacuation site. I think so too, Kishimoto-san. That, um, we should be heading to the evacuation site. Ayase suddenly came to a halt, as though Yuwa's backing had possibly made some sense to her. She narrowed her eyes. And then, she looked beyond. Beyond the rugged Dogenzaka roads that no car could traverse. Over there. Huh? Over where? <gasps> oh! Oh my gosh! Nanami! How did she get out? What the frick? How did she escape? What? Okay. At the end of Ayase's gaze was a lone girl walking away from the station. She was wearing a Suimei Academy uniform, though it was far more tattered than either Ayase's or Yua's. And with only her left hand, she was holding an enormous cross-shaped sword to her chest. Her gait was markedly unsteady. It looked as though she could collapse at any moment. Oh, oh no! Momose's body jiggled as she ran toward the girl, toward Nishijo Nanami. The D-sword Nanami was carrying had caught her eye, but instead of prying it in order to satiate her curiosity, she focused only on supporting the girl's petite frame. Are you alright? You've done a wonderful job hanging in there thus far, but right now we need to get you to the hospital. 
So just hang on a little longer, okay? Nanami's eyes responded in blank confusion to Momose's words of encouragement. Hey. Uh. Huh? What did you say? My bangle. Where did it go? Both Yua and Ayase belatedly ran up beside Momose. Wait! That girl! She's Nishijo-kun's little sister! I see. Her being Takumi's little sister. This speaks to her qualifications as a Black Knight. You two! Help me carry her! One way or another, we need to get her to a hospital. It hurts. Nanami groaned in pain. My right hand. <sighs> Your right hand? Momose inadvertently glanced toward Nanami's right hand, gasping in surprise when she did. <gasps> What manner of cruelty? How could this happen? Huh? <sighs> Yua and Ayase were not able to grasp why Momose was so distraught. While the bandage over Nanami's right hand was indeed stained with blood, it did not seem to be that serious of an injury. However, in Momose's eyes, Nanami's hand had been severed from her bandaged wrist. Though medical measures had been taken, it was still an open wound. With a blank look on her face, Ayase attempted to grab Nanami's right hand, but her outstretched hand passed only through empty air. Like a holographic image, Nanami's fingers lacked any substance. A drop of blood trickled down from the red-stained bandage and fell onto Ayase's hand. Wait, so she she's she has a delusion of her hand? Wait. I, I don't understand, because Momose doesn't see the hand, but Ayase does? Is that what I'm getting? <gasps> a delusion. Demi-san came to save me. Dimi-san? As in, Sakihara Dimi-san? Do you know her? Uh, um... She's one of Nishijo-kun's friends. Yua had always held the suspicion that Takami was the true new-gen culprit, so she knew a fair amount about his background. This also extended to those that would frequently come into contact with him, Therefore, it was only natural for her to have conducted investigations on Nishijo Nanami and Sakihara Dimi. In contrast to Yua, Ayase abandoned her typical aloof expression, grimacing at the mere mention of Dimi's name. <laughs> Sakihara Dimi, too, is one of the Seven Black Knights. Huh? It, is that really true? Ayase recalled yesterday's incident at the hospital. She could remember being addressed by Dimi's apologetic voice. Oh, that's right, she smacked her, I forgot about that. Kishimoto-san. Please, stay away from Taku. I can't let him awaken. Have you no self-awareness, even as one of the Black Knights? I can handle this myself. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Dang! <laughs> it is so very beautiful, what you hope to accomplish. But it is not what the greater will desires. I do not desire it either. 
You must not bear all of this on your own. <sighs> Yo, that's why she smacked her. Oh, dang. Let's just put this talk of Black Knights on the back burner for now. She needs medical attention this instant. She's losing a lot of blood. Momose gently placed her handkerchief on Nanami's open wound. She has an awful fever, and I can see her going pale. We need to hurry. Big bro, I want to see my big bro. Tears trickled from Nanami's vacant eyes. Right at that moment, something happened. What the frick? In an instant, the highway they were standing on collapsed with a deafening roar. They all lost their footing, helplessly entering freefall at gravity's mercy. To them, it was like they were falling into the deepest, darkest, lowest circle of hell. Losing herself in that illusion, Momose raised a scream so loud it betrayed her age entirely. Whoa. <coughs> when I came to, dark clouds covered the sky overhead. The dark night had come to an end before I knew it. There wasn't a shred of blue sky in sight. I was hit with a wave of depression. The sky could not have been more gloomy. Countless sirens from ambulances and fire trucks blared off in the distance. A multitude of helicopters were in the sky, circling the city like flies. My head was racked with pain, like someone was putting a jackhammer to it. It felt even worse than after the last earthquake. I tried to remember what happened before my memories had cut off. The sky turning white. Shogun mentioning the third melt. I ignored my headache and stood up, only to lose all words. Oh, frick. The usual scenery was entirely absent. It was like a scene out of the end of the Millennium thing that everyone had been freaking out about almost a decade ago. Shibuya was on the verge of collapse. Traffic lights, roadside trees, and buildings had all fallen to the ground. The Jumbotrons, the most iconic part of Scramble Crossing, really, had cracks ripping through them and were entirely silent. The stairs leading down to the subway were buried beneath the rubble of their own ceilings. The guard around the Yamanote line had fallen apart, and the railway had been ripped to shreds. More people than I could count were lying on the ground. Blood and guts clung to the scattered debris. Some remained motionless. Some moaned in pain. Some screamed for help. Some were covered in dust, crawling on all fours without a care as to how it made them appear. Some only cried, tightly cradling another motionless body in their arms. I could smell all the blood. The rusty smell mixed with the stench of something burning. Everything was covered with the thick odor of dust. Far in the distance, plumes of black smoke rose like smoke signals. This was the power of Noah too. It was horrifying. This was already on the scale of a weapon of mass destruction. I now understood why Shogun wanted to put an end to this. Come to think of it, where was Shogun? When I came back to myself, I surveyed my surroundings. There was a bent wheelchair lying pretty close to me, and right beside it, his delicate frame was lying there. I ran over to him in a panic and lifted him up. Hey! Can you hear me? Say something! He didn't react. 
not even his inner voice said anything. Oh, Frick. Was he dead? I put my ear to his mouth. As faint as it was, he was still breathing. But he was still unconscious. I tried hitting him lightly on the cheek a few times, but to no avail. Where is it? Where is Noah too? If I didn't know where it was, there was no way I could make it in time to save Demi or Nanami. I should have asked him that when I had the chance. Clicking my tongue, I took my phone out of my pocket. It was off, and despite my many attempts to get it working, it stayed that way. It was nothing more than garbage now. Aside from Shogun, who else would know where to find it? Think. Think, gosh darn it! I didn't have time for this. While I was wandering around doing absolutely freaking nothing, that Narose guy could be ready to kill Demi at any moment. Then who? Who was someone I could trust? Someone who knew about Noah too? Senna, oh. You are all special beings. And the most special among you is the boy who birthed, whose eyes are those eyes. Hatano Issei, Senna's dad, one of the founding members of Project Noah, the person who was nowhere to be found right now. Not to mention, I'd never met him before. Wait, it was possible we'd passed each other on the street before, actually. Kozapi had told me all about his homeless lifestyle, with the guy always wandering around Shibuya. I have to find him. With the surprisingly light body of Shogun on my back, I mindfully made my way through the debris. Interesting he's taking Shogun with him, though. Because he doesn't like him, right? Maybe he still feels like he needs him, I don't know. I didn't have a clue as to where Hatano-san was. But I had no choice. I had to find him. No matter what. <laughs> 